Hey everybody, Mr. Mall here. So we're gonna go over thermoregulation and what we just saw in our lab. So the question I'm posing to you though is at the top, why does our skin turn blue when cold and red when hot? So we're gonna look at that and why this happens and why your fingers turn blue when you're sitting in Mr. Mall's room and it's 65 degrees in here. So the big answer is thermoregulation. That's a pretty fancy word. So let's break it down really quick. So thermo, uh, well I keep hot stuff in a thermos. So thermos has to do with temperature or heat, whatever one you really want to say, temperature or heat. Regulation means to control something or maintain. So thermal regulation stands for temperature control or maintaining heat, maintaining temperature, controlling heat, whatever you want to say. It's maintaining the temperature within our body. That's the big thing with thermal regulation. So with all this, our body needs to stay at a pretty constant temperature. 98.6 degrees is kind of the textbook answer, but there's a range there. Your body just needs to stay somewhere around there. If you start bumping into the hundreds, it's a little too warm. If you start going a little too low, it, bad things can happen to your body. I mean, that's what happens when you have a fever. So our body has one goal in mind. Now, this is going to sound weird. So I'm going to get rid of that. This is going to sound weird, but our body will sacrifice things to stay alive. Its main job job is to keep the core of your body alive. This is why people can get around with missing limbs and missing parts of organs and things like that. But if we have the core parts of our body alive, our body's happy. So our body has main goal, stay alive. Okay. No place to die. You got to stay alive. That's the main goal of our body. And that's all it wants to do. And it will shut things down and get rid of things if that's in jeopardy. So we're going to see how our body does this. Okay. So when we dunked our hands in cold water, we saw these results here, okay? We saw probably a decrease in skin temperature, but our internal temperature probably stayed about the same. It might have varied a little bit, but generally it stayed within the ballpark. So how does that happen? Our hand is in cold water. Shouldn't our internal temperature go down? Like if I dunk a spoon in really cold water, the end of that spoon that's not in the water is gonna be cold. So why didn't our internal body temperature go down? Well, let's find out. Our body has ways of combating this. So what we have here, now this is a kind of interesting picture. So what we have here is this is skin or epidermis, if you want to be fancy. And what we have is we have blood vessels here. We have blood coming from the heart on the left, and it's traveling down our veins and arteries. Okay. What happens is when it's really cold outside or we dunk our hand in something cold, we actually close off some of our blood vessels, our um, arterioles, as they're called. So we close these down so blood doesn't get close to the skin. Now, why doesn't it want to go close to the skin? Well, the skin is cold. If our blood touches or gets close to the skin, the blood's going to be cold. And when that cold blood goes back to our heart and then our lungs, it can change things up and not for the good. So what happens is we close off some blood cells so that blood stays closer to this warm inside of the body down here. That's important is that our blood wants to stay warm so it stays kind of closer to the center of your hand or arm or even just the, the core of your body. Now, this is called vasoconstriction, okay? Vaso stands for veins or arteries and constriction stands for to tighten. So we're tightening our veins and arteries so less blood is going to our skin. Now. We're gonna, there's some bad things about that too, and we're gonna touch on that at the end, but you can probably already start to think of some things that are not good about that. So let's look at the opposite. Hot air or too hot outside. So this is when we dunked our hand in hot water, okay? This is the same as if it's too hot outside. This is actually also the same if you're working out. If you're, it's too hot inside the body or just every, anything is too hot with us. What we saw was our skin temperature increased and our internal temperature probably stayed about the same once again. Our body has ways of combating this, so let's take a look at that. How? So what we see is a very similar picture. We have blood coming from the left, okay? But now we're actually seeing that these veins and arteries are expanding or opening up. That's to increase blood flow to the skin here. The more blood that's hitting the skin, the heat from the, oops, the heat from the blood is leaving our body. 
So we're actually getting rid of heat in the blood. So this is a way our body has of combating heat when our internal temperature gets too hot. So like when I go for a run, my face turns really red because I'm actually getting rid of some of that heat. Okay, so it's gonna kind of hinge into the next thing a little bit. But this is called vasodilation in that our veins and arteries dilate or open, they expand. So our veins and arteries open up. So we start to see more blood flow to the skin to get rid of some of the heat inside of our body. Now, extreme cold, okay? When it's too cold, so this is Jack Nicholson from The Shining. He's frozen outside. Don't worry, he tried murdering his family. He's fine. Um, he froze to death. Sorry, spoiler of the movie. Um, but what happens is when it's really, really cold out is our body stops sending blood to the skin. And what that can do is that can kill the skin. With too little oxygen, too little blood flow to the skin causes frostbite. So you've all heard of that, frostbite. So if I'm outside in the cold for too long and I don't have gloves on, there's so little blood going to my fingers because they're so cold, my body doesn't want to send blood to its fingers, to my fingers. So those skin cells die and they can't be reborn. So I get frostbite. This is your body's way of saving itself. So it pretty much kills off the fingers to save the inside of the body, save the core of the body. That's big, is that our body is trying to stay alive. It doesn't care if you have to get rid of some fingers. If the heart, the lungs, the brain is all working and all warm, that's cool with it, okay? Now on the other side, we have it's too hot. So we got Larry the Legend here, Larry Bird. So he's looking a little pink right now. Now the reason for that is he's got increased blood to the skin. He's playing basketball, so he's probably pretty hot right now. He's trying to get rid of some of that heat, so blood is increased to the skin. So that's why he's red right now, is that his body is trying to get rid of some heat. Now he's doing some other things too. He's sweating, he's opening up some uh, sweat glands. Um, that's another way, evaporation, of getting rid of some heat inside the body. So there's all these ways that our body thermoregulates to maintain temperature. When it's cold outside, we shiver. That's another way to maintain temperature, okay? When it's hot outside, we sweat and we turn red so we can get rid of some of that heat. So this is thermoregulation in a nutshell. This is going to introduce us next class into our feedback mechanisms of how our body actually works to maintain homeostasis, to maintain temperature, to maintain glucose levels, to maintain all of this stuff. So this is kind of our introduction into thermoregulation. I hope it helps you understand everything. Good luck.